Now, today we are going to talk about the history of Israel from the Bible. You don't think the Bible is only consists of prayers, devotions, beautiful psalms, and some good teachings, and also story of miracles, do you? Yes, some of part of the Bible is also history. Last time we talked about the ancient nations of Israel was when they left Egypt and then they received the Ten Commandments and after that they were wandering around in the desert for 40 years instead of like 40 days. On the way to the promised land, to the Canaan, the land that God promised to their ancestor which is Abraham. So after wandering for 40 years led by Moses, Moses was replaced by Joshua. Joshua was in charge with the 12 tribes of Israelites entering the Canaan land. Of course, Joshua and the Israelites, they went through a series of skirmishes and war. And by the end of the war, every tribe they received the land in the Canaan, except for the Levites. Because the Levites, they were being in charge as the priests of God. So they don't get land, but they were in charge of the religious role. After the leadership of Joshua, the leadership of the ancient nation of Israel were being in charge to the judges. These judges like Othniel, Deborah, Samuel, Gideon, and Samson are the one who in charge of the 12 tribes of Israel. These people, these judges are not kings though. Throughout the leadership of these judges, the ancient nations of Israel, the 12 tribes, they are constantly having a conflict with their neighboring nations like the Philistines, the Moabites, the Edomites, and also the Arameans, and also the Termites. A little bit information about the Philistines. The Philistines also known in the history known as the Sea People. Yes, they were the one who were responsible for the destruction that they caused with many nations during those times, especially during the end of the Bronze Period. Some of these Philistines, they settled out in the Canaan, become the neighbors of the Israelites. Now, as a consequences, God let David's kingdom split. But not yet. It takes time. David later on, his kingdom was filled with civil wars. David later on, he will be replaced by his son, someone by the name of Solomon. Solomon known as the wealthiest king ever lived. And at the same time, Solomon known as the wisest king ever lived. Could it be the Messiah? Could it be like saving, like, you know, could it be like saving what David done in his reign? Could be though, could be. If only Solomon, if only Solomon did not commit the sin, Solomon, he committed sin by marrying 700 wives and the 300 concubines. Now, what does that mean? Now, Solomon have like 700 wives plus 300 female servants? That's a lot of wives. Now, the main concern is not the amount of the number of the wife itself, but this one. For every wife that he married with, now this wife is the foreign wife. These wives are not Israelites, and these wives are not Hebrew. This wife of Solomon brought with her the local idols, brought with them their gods, brought with them their pagan rituals. And then asking for Solomon to build a temple or to build an altar in the city of Jerusalem. Which is, that is a big no-no because the city of Jerusalem is reserved only for the one and true God of Israel. The city of Jerusalem was populated right now with idols. And it attracted the Israelites itself to commit a sin by worshipping idols. Remember the first and the second in the Ten Commandments? Yes, this is the main concern. For because of this one, God surely will split the kingdom of Israel. After the death of King Solomon in the year of 931 BC, his kingdom split in half. The ten tribes of Israel in the north, they rebel against the king, which is at this moment the kingship was being passed down to the son of Solomon, someone by the name of Rehoboam. The ten tribes rebel against Rehoboam. And then meanwhile, the other two tribes, which is Judah and also the Levi, they stay remain loyal to Rehoboam. Interesting story about this rebellion is because like when Rehoboam become a king, he was asking advices to the elders. These elders are working closely with his father Solomon. And then Rehoboam as a young king did a good job. 
he asked these elders what to do as a king. What to do as a king. And then asking for advice from these elders. And then these elders give a wise advices. One of the advisors says that Rehoboam have to be nice a little bit with the Israelites because at this moment, the Israelites, they were being overworked. They were being oppressed by the previous king Solomon. They're working too hard and give them some kind of like time to relax. If the story ends there, it will be a good story. But what Rehoboam did next is very unwise. He talked to his friends, he talked to his peers, and then asking advice from his peers. And then his friends give him advice. Well, don't believe those elders. Oh, Rehoboam, you are now the king. You are the number one person in Israel. Of course you can do anything. You are the king. So, instead of being nice to the people of the Israelites, instead of like give them some extra holidays and being not too bossy on them, give them more works. Give them more punishment and ask them to work harder. Show them that you are the boss. Show them that you are more mean than Solomon. Rehoboam. He listened to the second advice rather than the elders. Now, because of that one, the rebellion happens. The ten tribes of Israel, they had enough, and then they rebel against the king, and they formed themselves another king known as the Northern Kingdom of Israel. And then they elect another person by the name of Jeroboam. Now, do not get confused, okay? Jeroboam and Rehoboam. Jeroboam is the king of the ten tribes of Israel in the north, and then Rehoboam is the king of the southern kingdom of Judah in the south. The southern kingdom of Judah, they have their capital still in uh, Jerusalem. And meanwhile, the northern kingdom of Israel, they pick a city by the name of Samaria in the north. And so there you go. That is a quick brief history about the Israel kingdoms. Now you can see the pattern there. The consequences of the sins, sometimes you will not going to see it instantly it will take time it will grow it will mature it will become bigger and stronger until finally it become actualized that is what happened when the israelites split if only the israelites they are content with having only judges instead of a king then this probably will not going to happen the split of their kingdom shouldn't be happened if only david did not commit adultery and murder then the kingdom will not going to split but think about that for a moment. Did the kingdom split right away after David committed a sin? No, right? It takes several years later. God is a God of a second chance. God always gives us a second chance to repent, to do the right thing. But when the time is due, that's it. The consequences will happen. That is the lesson that you can learn from today's lessons. The consequences of sin will not going to come instantly, but it will come later. Let me close it with this one. From James chapter 4, verse 15. It entices us. It drags us away. These desires will give birth to sinful action. And when the sins is allowed to grow, it become mature, and then eventually it will bring death. Alright. Thank you for watching this video. I see you guys next time. God bless you guys all. Bye-bye.